Well, I appreciate you joining us on our first ever podcast for Modern Melon Maw. Thanks for having me. Here I uh, am. <laughs> if you guys don't know, this is my decoy Annie Tibbetts. She is absolutely amazing, a total badass. Um, I found out about her because she responded to my video when I asked for people wanting the uh, paid internship. And you were the one that made, you were the first one that made it to the round where we would meet in person. And I love the fact that you were a firefighter paramedic because I knew that your ability to put a fire suit on would be so much, would, would make putting a bite suit on completely a breeze. And you proved me right. You can move in it better than I can because your years of training in a much harder suit and uh and i knew you would be fit enough to do it because it's very hard to do and also it's amazing that we're almost the same size yeah i remember you saying uh like kind of after the fact but you kind of mentioned like oh gosh you know sounds like she'd be pretty cool but uh i really hope she's not like four foot (laughs) eleven you know that would have really sucked i think it's cool that we're like we're pretty much the same height um, same build too, mm-hmm. which is it's kind of cool. It makes it a lot easier. Like turnouts are definitely a little warmer, a little harder to move in, but uh, I have to be able to pop in and out of them fairly quickly to go on fires. So bite mm. suit to that. Not a huge, not a huge transition. So yeah, I mean, I'm psyched to be here. I'm glad you picked me. It's been a really cool adventure, cool journey, and it's totally different from what I do for work. So I'm glad to be here too. Well, and another thing I love is your ability to think under pressure, you know, that definitely influenced by your work. You know, I can give you instructions and teaching you in the middle of the bite and you can take those instructions and incorporate them right then and there. And you're not frazzled that this dog is like manhandling your leg and you're just, uh, you incorporate it like it's, we were sitting in a classroom. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think the, two professions kind of translate well to each other and I mean it doesn't help I mean it does help uh I've always really loved dogs so that's I mean and I think also kind of ironically like you have a huge TikTok following but for me like I found you on Instagram I'm like a nobody nothing I was like oh this is so cool like he lives in my area I'm gonna you know see what happens (laughs) you know it's just life is wild like that um and it just so happens that like what I do translates really directly and like just the mindset I have to have translates really easily into this kind of work and being able to uh, work with you, I think has also been really great. Like, I think you and I have a good dynamic, which Mm. is probably why you picked me to come sit with you and chat with you today. (laughs) Cause we, I mean, we've been hanging out. We've been had, we've had a really good last, I mean, gosh, it's, you know, in just a month or a couple months, it'll be a whole year of working together, which has been really nice. Yeah. It's been awesome. So I'm happy to be here. I also love the fact that you are a woman doing bite sports and a decoy because you know even though there's probably a lot more women doing the the bite sports and being a dog trainer than men the you know the loudest and most heard voices are male which is you know no surprise given the misogyny of the world but i just love that you know you've been doing bite work for a relatively short amount of time and i would put you against you know any of these guys any of these macho dudes thinking that they know what to do because none of them are even getting bit i see these guys acting like they're hardcore and i'm like bro the dog's just biting the suit he's not even biting your leg how are you, why are you why are you wincing well i can say with certainty you're uh i'm definitely i'm definitely being bitten uh it's not a trick it's not an illusion it's real um as you can see with some of your videos and like the the bruise you know what is the carnage photos that i have mm-hmm. taken over time but um i you know it's really sweet of you to say that it's you know i feel very privileged to be able to come on to any kind of like totally separate from like anything in my life work and i think social media is one of those amazing things that allows people to connect i mean there's no way i would have ever found you in real life And so the fact that like I get to come out here, you know, on a fairly regular basis and I get to get bitten and learn and like kind of expand my entire like world of like knowledge is like pretty much one of the coolest things I could ask for. I mean, gosh, it's, you know, in just a month or a couple months, it'll be a whole year of working together, which has been really nice. Yeah, it's been awesome. So I'm happy to be here. Happy to, you know, be chatting and talking about dogs. Mm -hmm. Um, I know... Uh, you haven't been posting a lot recently. I know you maybe wanted to talk about that. I don't know if 
you know, whether or not you wanted to elaborate yeah, so a little bit. But a lot of people don't know uh, because I didn't know until somewhat recently um, that I am definitely autistic, like actually autistic, not a, you know, pretend autistic. And um, I just get horrible burnout. You know, when I was younger, the burnouts would happen more frequently, but they wouldn't last as long. And now it's like the burnouts happen once a year, but it's for two, three months where I still train my dogs, as you know, I still, you know, am obsessed with them. But just the idea of posting just stresses me out. Uh, and in the summer, you know, the TikTok's not really that busy. So I feel like I'm wasting my time um, because I'm not going to, you know, I'm like putting all this effort into content. I know it's not going to get views, but a lot of people don't know that I'm very private about my life and I'm very, you know, I can be type A, but then it's more of a mask. Like I can put on a great ex extra, uh, extrovert type A mask, but I am would much rather never speak to people or see people. <laughs> but honestly, like that level of intensity and like dedication that, you know, obviously TikTok is not the medium for kind of displaying that. It's um, it's apparent to me because I work with you and like day after day, like obvious like dedication and hours spent with your dogs. Um, it's I mean, it's nonstop. I think people know that these dogs are incredible. They're dedicated, but they, I mean, they require every ounce of your being all the time. And fortunately for you, like you have the capacity to do that, even if, you know, you in your own world are not able to come in and be present or make these videos happen because it's just that extra bit. But it, I mean, starting a podcast, being part of that, it's a whole new kind of direction. And I'm excited for like being able to be here for the very outset of it. It's very cool. Yeah, I wanted to, I knew, some, I wanted to do something different, be able to talk about things that I couldn't otherwise talk about or just, you know, want a barrier to entry to certain topics that I don't really want to bring up on TikTok because there's so many uh, just rando people that are seeing my <laughs> videos that aren't trainers or have no experience with working dogs or maybe, you know, are looking for a quick fix and I don't want to give the wrong impression about certain things. Yeah, I mean, you know, kind of like going down that avenue, I think something you don't talk about a lot and I think would be kind of cool for your first podcast maybe is just to talk a little bit about like you know, aversion training, like e-collar use. I think that's not something that's touched on. I think you're very um, careful with your choice of how to go about that. I guess if you want to just start, elaborate on like what you do with that, like how you um, are ca like cautionary, mm -hmm. like why do you choose that route? What are, you, what are your thoughts, I guess? Yeah, so I've, I've brought this up multiple times on my live um, and I've explained my thought process. So I'm not, it's not something that I'm like, oh my gosh, totally. I'm hiding you know, a lot of people think, well, you know, oh, he's like trying to hide the fact that he uses an e-collar. Uh, and the reason that I don't ever put it on my dogs in my videos is because I want to show that we can do all this stuff, you know, without the need of the e-collar at all times. Um, I have phased out aversion or basically any any positive punishment out of my training, out of my learning. Um, the only place that I haven't been able to fully phase it out is the out. And the reason I want to bring that up here and not on TikTok is because people will hear that and think, oh, well, Matt's, you know, he's just a compulsion trainer. And I think, you know, it's far from the truth. Um, they don't see that 99% of my training for the out is with things like the pre-mac principle, trading for food, um, you know, generalizing it in different situations. And it's just that one small spot. I have never found a way to have a dog that's training for real civil bites that can have a genuinely, you know, top level fluency, meaning that they can out in any situation, whether they're biting inside, outside, on the property, off the property, a new person, whether a new person's holding a toy. Um, you know, I've seen amazing dogs who are titled in bite sports that have never had any kind of compulsion used on them and you put them in a situation that they're not used to and all of a sudden they have no out. And uh, I am constantly reaching out to professionals that are more educated than I am because I don't like the fact that I have to use it. And I'm experimenting with ways to try to phase it out. Um, you know, I've, I've talked to three people so far this year who I think are more educated and more experienced than I am trying to, you know, see what are they, th what are their thoughts? Do they have any, any, any concrete ideas? And 
Um, I haven't as of yet found one, you know, and my, my criteria for the out is one they have out immediately. So when I say out, it's got to be like a fraction of a second later, they're spitting it out, not just gently opening. It's boom. They're opening their mouth. Um, two, they need to stay locked on the target. So I don't want a dog that outs and then turns around to look at me because the threat's right there. I'm not the threat. Um, and so that's one of the reasons that I don't do a lot of switching toys. I don't say out and then give them a toy um, because I don't want them to, I don't want them, you know, thinking, oh, he's going to give me a toy like behind no my back. No anticipation of that. And um, I guess just from the perspective of your decoy, like I, I know that to be true. Like, all, you know, Ulrich comes to me or like it starts biting, he'll out, it's immediate and he's focused completely straight back where he was biting. He's ready for that immediately, right again. And that kind of fluency is incredible. And it, I think it truly like from my perspective, I feel like he would understand that no matter what circumstance he was in and he would understand. Mm -hmm. But kind of like on that same note, like I think, you know, you, you use it in color like very rarely, like 1% one per, one of the time that like you're working with me or like doing things. It's really just like it's a matter of like how high value what they're doing, you know, and that kind of like uh, correlation there. But it's so it's not it's not a common thing and i don't think that you know showcasing that in terms of social media would be a good representation of how you actually mm. and i'm working with the you know a lot of people say this <laughs> they say you know oh you know these are the most extreme drive dogs you don't <laughs> understand uh, and you know the type of mouths that i'm working with are like, way more drivey then you know they're way more high drive than you know even most mouths you're going to see in the states that the mouths that are coming from belgium are just on a different level and you know i work them through all levels of drive you know i start off with doing the out with the puppy with food because they're going to out for food um, and then there comes a time when they won't out for food even for a steak and so you you know, i start to incorporate at that point you know i'm already working on uh, teaching the dog to drop a toy so that I will throw it. You know, I spend a lot, a lot, a lot of time building our trust. I'm sure you remember, you know, when Alexandra came home and I would have her say on the couch with me or I'd be sitting on the floor and she, at first she didn't really want to come sit with me by the, with the toy. Cause she's like, Oh, I got the toy. I don't want him to take it away. Then she learned, Oh, he's not going to take it away. And then eventually, you know, like if she were to drop it once, I throw it. Oh my gosh! And then she'd come back, and eventually I can say, "Hey, do you want me to throw it?" And, and she'll, she'll be like, "Okay, yeah." yeah. But I, I mean, what's apparent about that, at least from like the perspective I have, is like that took months. That wasn't a. She figured that out in a like that. That trust was built over a, a, quite a period of time. Um, but now it's she understands the dynamic. She understands that relationship with you. And she knows that you're going to throw the toy if she gives it to you. Exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, that's one of the ways I do a lot with the pre mac principle, um, you know, and the way I incorporate that is, you know, I have, uh, I have them, you know, playing with them, pushing, mm -hmm. kind of simulating bite work. I have them out. And as soon as they out, boom, they get it again. Mm -hmm. And there's a fine line between making sure they're not taking cheap shots and deciding, you know, I get to have it whenever I, you know, as soon as I out, I get to bite it again. But, you know, I'm working that through levels of drive. You know, I'm working that in different areas, you know, my backyard, in my bed, on my couch, you yep. know, in my car, you know, in a field downtown. Yep. And so, you know, it's that kind of stuff, that, you know, people, and then, you know, you hear, me say oh well, i use the e-collar as well and they're thinking oh, oh he just that's yeah. and i'm more worried i'm you know if, if someone wants to misrepresent me or you know wants to like think bad things about me oh well i'm more worried about putting this up on tiktok and then saying that and getting a whole bunch of people thinking oh well, he just teaches the out with an e-collar so we're gonna go buy an e-collar and just blast our dog yeah. if they don't out we're just gonna zap them you know to get them to do exactly what needs to happen it's, which is just not the case those two things are not happening you know, to get any kind of result in the way that you are. What are your thoughts about punishment in dog training? The more punishment a trainer needs to use, the less skilled they are. Let me say that again. The more punishment you use, the less skilled they are. In the learning process, punishment has no place. It stresses the dog out and their ability to learn plummets, if not shuts down completely. And unless you're doing really extreme high level things like civil type bites, you probably won't ever need to use punishment in your training. And if that's something you're reaching for constantly or over and over, then you need to consult someone who knows more than you and grow as a trainer.
That wasn't bad. I like that. I hundred percent like that. I vote. I vote yes on that one. So we can be done. Yeah. Well, do you? Do you? We have to say goodbye. All right. Yeah, we have to say goodbye. If you don't know, we've been. <laughs> I've been trying to say that for like thirty minutes now, and uh, we it's, appreciate it's it. My first podcast. <laughs> <laughs> my first podcast. Well, I appreciate you joining us on our yeah. first episode, and we'll uh, see you again soon. And hopefully, it'll be a little less awkward, and I won't uh, feel like I'm masking as hard in future episodes, and we can just you know relax and be more of who we are not in front of the camera oh yeah well i'm excited for it